um, give you an update to that breaking news, that plane crash that we have been following. This happened at 430, 445 this evening. This is the best video that we have been able uh, to bring you. We have just confirmed in the last two seconds that two people have died in that fire. We believe they were people inside the plane. We know that people in the house, that home that they are renting, the family there was not home. They have an infant and and luckily they were not home at the time. The FAA has confirmed this is a beach BE 36 Bonanza that crashed into that home on the 6000 block of Chandler Drive. This is in Claremont. It's about a half mile west of Montgomery Field and the plane and the house caught fire. The plane landed seemingly in the backyard of that blue house in Olive Grove Park, and that's when the house became engulfed. Um, again, we are just learning that two people have died. Um, we also heard reports from several neighbors who said that they heard the sputtering and it looked like the plane was trying to head back to the airport. They heard the sputtering, then they heard a loud explosion, and that's the next thing that they saw. What you see on your screen, a large fireball and several of those neighbors not knowing if anyone was inside that blue house. They started breaking windows and trying to put that fire out before the fire department arrived. We do have a, a reporter on scene right now. Masa Saeed has been there um, collecting evident, um, information for us and she has the very latest. What have you been able to learn, Masa? Hey, Vanessa, we're expecting an update from firefighters in about 10 to 15 minutes. We will bring that to you live, but I did just speak with a firefighter on scene. He did tell me there were four people on that plane. He said the two people on that plane have passed away and two people were able to get out. We are still working to confirm that with the PIO and with the battalion chiefs here, but a firefighter on the scene did tell me that four people were on the plane, two were killed, two have not passed away. We have no update as to what their injuries are at this time. We expect that is the information that we're going to get in about 10 minutes. The briefing is set to happen right at the location where we are, but we just want to show you still a very active scene. You have firefighters uh, here on the scene. This is the home. I know you've been talking about it. It is in the backyard of this home where that plane went down. I see in my email, we just have some more information from the FAA. So I'm gonna read this for the first time while showing you the scene here. It says that they do not release the number until next of kin are notified and that will not be tonight. So it looks like we're not gonna get the number of casualties confirmed from the FAA. They say that this is all preliminary inf information that an aircraft late today uh, did crash. It is what you mentioned, a beach BE36 Bonanza into a house 6246 Chandler Drive. And I can, uh, six, well, this is 6266. They said 46. So that's a, I'm not sure which house they're talking about. It's possible that they got the address wrong, but so they are saying that it did crash into the house. They're attributing local authorities that say there were four people on board the aircraft. And again, Four is the number that I just got about 60 seconds ago to two minutes ago from a firefighter um, scene. Um, it says the aircraft has substantial damage that lines up with what witnesses are telling us. Some couldn't even tell what they were looking at. Many, in fact, could not tell what they were looking at. Uh, no one was home at, at the house at the time of the incident. And they say, of course, FAA and NTSB are investigating. So I do have a question about why that address is not the address that lines up here. We know oftentimes information is wrong. We are on Chandler Street. We are on the 6000 block and we have been told by neighbors that there are no other homes in the back. So again, right now you can see a uh, police or fire. I'm sorry, that is fire on the scene here, checking out the scene, uh, trying to collect as much evidence as possible. They're going to preserve the scene for when NTSB and the FAA uh, will arrive on the scene. They will go through every inch of this backyard where this happened. Uh, we have seen a lot of video. I haven't been able to collect it yet and turn that around for you, but everyone in these homes does have video. They're going to collect video. They're going to find out exactly what caused this plane, this Beach BE 36 Bonanza to crash on this residential street. This is firefighters um, walking away from the scene as they're con uh, 
making sure that all the hot spots of the house are out. We are awaiting to get uh, this information about the two fatalities and the two people who were able to get out. Our big concern now, of course, we want to confirm the number of uh, fatalities with the battalion chief, but we also want to uh, get an update on to the injuries of the two other people, get ages. We're not going to get that information from the FAA, but we do hope to get that from firefighters when they have a briefing in the next uh, 10 minutes or so. We'll be sure to bring that to you live. Let's take it back to you right now. Masha, we will get back to you in just a moment, but we want to bring in Rich Martindale. He's a retired aircraft accident reconstructionist. We brought him in earlier when we didn't have a lot of information. And, and Rich, we have some more information now. We know what kind of aircraft this is. Can you weigh in a little bit? It's a Beach BE-36 Bonanza. What can you tell us about this particular aircraft? Uh, it's an aircraft that I fly. I don't know if it's, uh, I do fly that type of aircraft. But uh, the standard procedure before you take off, and this, this, this particular location is right on the departure path out of Montgomery, so it looks like it was a uh, takeoff problem. Uh, but the procedure is, before you start your takeoff, is you run the engine up, you make sure everything is working before you start your, uh, your takeoff. Um, there are any number of possibilities, and that's the whole, whole purpose of the investigation, is to ask all the questions, not just the obvious questions and uh, eliminate every possibility rather than just jumping on the first obvious answer. Sure, and Rich, we know it was about a half mile uh, just west of Montgomery Field and neighbors had reported to us they heard sputtering and it looked to them like the pilot was trying to get back to the to the airport. And, and uh, again, it's, uh, what sounds like sputtering is probably true. And uh, that will certainly be a reason to look at the engine and see if they could find anything wrong with the engine. Uh, whether the pilot was trying to get back or not, uh, the, the impact scars will tell them what the trajectory of the airplane was, what kind of heading he had, and maybe he was trying to get back. But uh, that's all the stuff that will come out during the investigation. It doesn't happen in an hour like it does on the TV shows. Sure, and, and we know that they're hard at work right now. And Rich, not the first time that a plane has crashed in San Diego with devastating consequences. When you, when you talk about jet fuel and we could see that huge ball of, of fire there and the house completely engulfed. When we hear two people have died in that plane, two injuries, um, does it surprise you that, that, that two people came out of that? Well, I think it's miraculous that two people came out of it, uh, but uh, it's great that they did. Uh, obviously, if the airplane was just taken off, it was full of fuel. It wouldn't be jet fuel. It would be what we call avgas, which is, is more like gasoline that you put in your car, but it's still very flammable, and uh, there would probably be 50 or 60 gallons of it uh, in the airplane at the time of the crash. Sure. Okay. Um you know, anything else that you can tell us about this plane, its safety record, perhaps? You had mentioned that you fly this plane. I fly that type of airplane. Uh, it's it's an extremely safe airplane. It's been around since uh, the, the type has been around since the 1940s. I don't know when this particular airplane was built, but it's a very reliable airplane. Uh, many, many of them produced and uh, flown all over the United States and around the world. So it's, it's, uh, it's not not common for these airplanes to crash. It's just the way it is today. And seemingly, Rich, you know, we got word that this happened at about 4.30, 4.45. Our crews got there minutes later and firefighters had this knocked out. You know, with the fire conditions that we've had, I know this had to give them quite a scare, but they seemingly got it out pretty quickly. Well, there's a fire station right on the west end of Montgomery that uh, is very close to that location, so it's not surprising that they were able to respond quickly. Uh, that particular fire station is versed in aircraft uh, accidents and, and recovery, so uh, they did a great job. Sure. And anything else that you would like to add to this, Rich? I guess the investigation moving forward, you'd mention it, it's going to take some time. It takes about a year to sort it all out. Mm -hmm. They'll get all the information together. Uh, but it'll take a year to analyze it and come up with a final finding. And, you know, something else that struck me in listening to some of these witnesses talk about it, they said there's not much left of that plane. In fact, they couldn't even make out what it was. Does that surprise you at all? Not at all. That's, that's very common for these airplanes. They're very fragile. Uh, they're, they're designed to be as light as possible, so they, they, uh, the structural integrity 
is based on the inner components. And once once the airplane hits the ground and it breaks up, it breaks up very much. And would there be a, a black box like you, that you see in a, in a commercial plane? No, none of your light general aviation aircraft have that. However, there are some uh, instrumentation that may have some data cards in it. But looking at the fire that I'm looking at, it would not have survived. It's not a crash survivable a piece of equipment like the black box and an airliner. Anything strike you so you're able to see the same video that we're looking at right now? Uh, no, it, it looks looks like a. Uh, yeah, there's nothing unusual about it. It's, it's just tragic. Right. Yes, and our hearts are very heavy. We know that two people did not survive. We don't know the full extent of the two people uh, that were injured, but um, very uh, fortunate that the family inside that home they were gone. There. They were gone. Yep. So that's that's the good news tonight because we know they have an infant. We know their dog did not survive, but uh, thank goodness because this could have been had the potential to be much worse. And we've seen that with other accidents, other crashes like this in San Diego. Yes, and and uh, that's that's unfortunately with with the urbanization around all the airports now. Every, every airport has to overfly populated areas for departures and arrivals. So. Uh, the good news is the, the the accident rate is extremely low. It's it's better than automobiles, and uh, so it's it's hard it's hard to make a, a comparison like that. But uh, that's that's the truth. Is it it's a it's a rarity, and thank goodness that it is. Rich Martindale, we want to thank you for your expertise, retired aircraft accident reconstructionist. We know that you've been on scenes like this many times, and we thank you for weighing in tonight. All right, glad to help you. All right. We want to check in now with Jen Dela Cruz. She's tracking uh, some of the winds.